little lucky little thing or you know kiss off that right edge thank god for that right edge all right you ready one t1 yep downward angle 45 45 there you go all right one transition one for the man card stand by 204 trying to play with in the big leagues bud 204 just slow it down you got plenty of time plenty of time come on daddy Second attempt for the man card. Stand by. Two, three, nine. Hey. Woo! Yeah, baby. 21. Yeah. But here's the thing and what's causing the, the, the improper recoil management. Most people, when they shoot, they do this. And it's like drawing a bow. This back shoulder opens up. So that's what I wanna share with you guys and why this can be problematic. So again, I shoot as a right-handed shooter, this shoulder opens up. Let's see what, what happens and what causes that back here. I'm just gonna need this magazine and then you guys get to where you can see right here. I'm just gonna borrow this. All right, so bring it in real quick. This is a very, very basic illustration to understand what's causing this. So our shoulder's behind the gun and my right shoulder is opened, okay? So let's just pretend this is my shoulder behind the gun. Yes, sir. If I take this shoulder and open it, I have now created a path of least resistance. So as this rifle comes back, it's gonna come back and up, but since I have a void now, it's going to fill that void. Where did my muscle just move to? Right. That's what ca is causing your high and right on your recoil management, not so much the support hammer. Okay, you can take the support hand off and put a vis laser on target, it still goes high and right. So what we wanna do is get our shoulder square behind the gun to fill that void. So now when the gun comes back, it hits metal, or it hits, and it can't go left or right, but up and then back down, right? And that's what we want. We want our muzzle to rise because what goes up must come down. come down. And now we have predictable recoil management, not this diagonal shit that's very hard to recover from. Now, if I shoot slow, check this out. Aiming at your chest and I shoot and I go, one, two, one, two. All my shots are gonna land center. But what if I shot at a speed double that rate? Boom, boom. Where's my second shot now? Go Off target, right. okay? <clears throat> What's opposite of high and right? Low and left. If you're tracking your dot, high right, opposite of low and left, as I come through, we have a quarter second visual delay. So if I track my dot high right off the target and I come back through and I'm like, hey, there's a the target. By the time my brain processes that, it's a quarter second delay, your shots will come in low left. So for any of you guys that are really running the gun and you notice your patterns coming low and left, it's a direct indicator that you're getting sucked into the dot on a uh, rifle, okay? It's not what causes it on a pistol from sympathetic response in the dominant hand, okay? So by getting our hip square, shoulder square behind the gun, now we have bone support. Now, a lot of people go, but Mark, my shoulder, I'm super buff here, right? So when I get my butt stuck in, I have butt stock contact. What's harder, bone or muscle? Bone. bone. So what happens is the butt stock's here, and I have full contact, but it's meat, it's, it's not bone. So when I shoot the, the, the path least resistance, it's just pushing into the muscle and it's still giving. So we need to take that shoulder. If I were to walk by and shoulder check somebody, I'm literally shoulder checking the buttstock. And then if you ever, anyone ever bumped their ear pro on rifle, okay, shoulder shrugs, we shoulder shrug up and forward and drive that buttstock in. And now you don't need a super tall mount to get a comfortable head position. You never bump your ear. Get a super tall mount, they're super nice, okay? But what that does is now we have bone support behind the buttstock. I wish I had my rifle because I have a vis laser and I'll do two demonstrations. Shoot, you see the dot jump, and then I get square behind the gun, shoot, and everything tracked vertically. Think about that. Either level change, and if you have the option to present to the other side, then do that. In this case, we do. So use the environment that you have to your advantage. Um, you know, 
any of these little trips, tips and tricks for you know being deceptive or changing what you are doing to then throw them off is going to gain you just a little bit of time. Sometimes it's, that's what you need. All right. Uh, so and let's talk about that, right? So on the sides that we're presenting out on, because I saw this a few times too, when you take those angles, can you give me some, some backlight there real quick? Whatever, whatever, whatever side you're coming out to, all right, think about that foot, that lead foot of the side you're presenting to, that's gonna be the leg that you lead with, all right? So I'm moving right side, I'll switch my feet up, even if it's not my normal shooting stance, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna take that, that leg and not so much lean out to the right as a lunge forward slightly. Because even if I'm lunging forward towards that barrel, that's gonna clear my muzzle. And I'll give myself some backsplash just so you can see the difference of like where uh, the shadow is gonna lie. But if I'm here, I get a little bit, all I'm doing is lunging forward. And now I just cleared the majority of that. And I can see the target very, you know, with minimum exposure on my own side. And even if you're not gonna switch shoulders or anything, it's the same idea on this side. I'm just gonna do that forward lean and now I can use that index point of my light on the barrel so I know I'm past that hard cover and I'll get out without being off balance as well because having that leg, that base underneath you is going to allow you to be stable as opposed to, like, Derek, come over here real quick. This is my normal shooting stance and I go to lean out, just give me a little push. Yeah, like, I'm not stable at all. But now, if I have this leg as my stability underneath me to balance on, Right. Hey, what's up going on? Hey, you need some help? Uh. I have to shift cool, but I have my feet underneath me. All right. Same thing with taking a knee. Um, that lead leg, that's going to be the foot that's planted. All right. And all I'm doing, again, is just leaning forward, not out. If, if you, you lean forward, forward lean, is all you need. You'll notice at that angle, right? If you even if you just hold your hand up in front of your face, kind of covering me up, and then you just move it closer to you, you'll be able to see more. It's the same thing. So instead of we're leaning into the cover and that's opening up our angle, instead of just leaning out. The reason why I was pushing you to find failure is because through failure, you're going to identify deficiencies in your shooting that we can now go back, root them out and fix them and then go back and then maintain that level of aggression, right? So if we don't push ourselves, we'll never find what that looks like, right? Slow aim fire does not require you to really master the fundamentals. All that means that you do uh, with slow aim fire is that I put the sights on target and I'm able to press the trigger without disrupting them. It doesn't require recoil management or good follow through or good visual uh, small acuity, right? To be in the predictive realm. So all these things only present themselves when we're shooting at our maximum capability. Now that will vary for all of us, right? That's your individual skill set. And at what distance and at what speed do they start to present themselves, right? So you saw when I found failure at the 25 yard line, uh, I didn't dial it down. I said, no, I know exactly what I fucking did. And I shot it just as aggressive and I was accountable, right? Because I'm able to identify the mistakes that I made and I know that's within my uh, wheelhouse to uh, maintain accountability to that, so I just shot it again. Now, if I knew I was pushing myself outside of my comfort zone, then I would be like, okay, dude, like, why did that fall off? And then let me make that correction. Let me just uh, dial it down slightly, get the correction. Okay, correction's good. Now ramp it back up to that speed and then focusing on where whatever deficiency it was right did i roll into the gun too hard with my shoulder did i lose my uh vision uh did i lose that refined state picture uh you know like whatever whatever it was for you right
Oh, fuck it. I didn't even give you your time for that. Fuck, dude. Damn it. <laughs> we'll see you in three hours when you get back from the distributor. Yeah. <laughs> Getting drunk tonight. Fuck. Oh, yeah, we're good. All right, here we go. <laughs> so much fun. Stand by. <laughs> oh, mother <laughs> fuck. Oh, my God, dude. Are you serious? <laughs> 725. Dude, those rifle. God damn. God damn it. Just like that echo. Where's Rick? Hey, you keg's on me. The keg. <laughs>